Welcome back to the homestead. Today we're going to be freeze drying fruit. We bought some peaches because we had tried previously freeze drying some canned peaches and Ryan really enjoyed those. He wanted to try fresh. Obviously in New England, it's not peach season. These came from the grocery store and I was hoping that they would be better than they are. They're quite grainy and mealy and the flavor is not very good, but we'll see how they come out through the freeze dryer. Some of the texture issues do disappear with freeze drying. So I'm optimistic that they may be edible at least. If they're not very good, we'll go ahead and feed them to the chickens. So it's not a big loss. It was something we wanted to try. Next we have canned pineapple. And again, Pineapples aren't exactly in season around here ever, but um, I really enjoy the canned pineapple as a snack that's more like a, um, a candy or a treat. And so I like to just have a couple bites of it when I'm feeling like I could use a little sweet. So those, there's no other real reason for us to freeze dry them because they were canned, other than the fact that I just really enjoy having them instead of candy. Then our go-to staple is apples. We've freeze dried a lot of apples now and they're just one of my favorite snacks. So we do a lot. One caveat to doing apples, make sure you don't combine them with another food that has a strong flavor. I did some apples while I was doing some broccoli as a filler and every one of the apple slices had a slight flavor of broccoli, which wasn't great but I still ate them. Over here we have mango. And again, obviously that's not a seasonal fruit here or an ever fruit up here in New England, but I do really enjoy it. We thought it would be a fun thing to try. So into the freeze dryer it goes. As I mentioned, it is really important to do it like flavor foods. Keep your fruits with your fruits, your vegetables with your vegetables, because some of the taste and smell can transfer over. We did the liver treats a while back, and there is still a light scent of liver um, around the freeze dryer area. And I do need to pull the whole thing out and clean the entire inside of it. There's nothing that overflowed. There's nothing that should be really causing it that's gross, but it just has a little bit of a smell to it. So we'll go ahead and clean that out after this load, but we've done one other load of apples before this since we did the liver and they were just fine. So I'm not really worried about it at the moment. We're gonna go ahead and get this started. So our little freeze dryer pad goes in just like that, nice and snug to keep the cold air in. And then we'll go ahead and seal that and press start. They are not frozen. We're closing our drain valve and we'll hit continue. And this will start its freezing process. Over here, we've plugged in a kilowatt meter so we're going to see exactly how much power it takes to freeze dry this load of fruit and we'll let you know how much that is. One reason that that is a pretty big concern for us here on the homestead is we do primarily use only solar power. We are connected to the grid, so of course if we need more power we can use it, but we are trying our best to have a net zero use on power. So we're creating enough that we have power to last us through the whole year. So we'll bring you back here in just a couple of seconds for you guys and show you the finished freeze dried fruit. When the uh, vacuum pump comes on, we'll come back out and get some more numbers on it. Okay, the 
process is done. Took uh, 21 and a half hours. And use 15.69 kilowatt hours. And as you noticed, we did see when we were watching yesterday uh, when the compressed uh, vacuum pump and the freezer unit are going at the same time. We're seeing about 1,350 watts of draw. Um, when just the freezer was going, I think it was five or 600 watts. And then to maintain this position here, which is done but keeping it frozen until you get to it, it's about 300 watts. We checked the power consumption on the freeze dryer this last cycle using a kilowatt meter and we'll put the details of that down in the description and let you know exactly what the cost was and how much power was used to make this freeze-dried load of fruit. Let's open it up and see if it's finished. are probably our thickest item here so we'll break one of them open I don't feel any cold they are very crispy so I believe that those are finished the pineapple looks nice and light and finished also mango and more pineapple. It all feels nice and dry. I don't feel any cool spots on any of it. We'll take it in and get it put into jars for eating. So we're doing a defrost cycle on the freeze dryer. And we'll keep track of what it uses for power as well. So this is the power consumption for the load of fruit we just did. So we'll come back and show you what the power consumption for the defrost cycle is. Now you don't have to do a defrost cycle. You can leave the door open and it will thaw out on its own and drain into the bucket. Uh, we're doing one here because we have another load of stuff we want to go right away. Here's the freeze dried fruit that we made all packaged up. And while it may seem a little bit silly that we're packaging a lot of this for eating immediately, it makes really good healthy snacks. So we eat the freeze dried fruit a lot of times instead of like potato chips or a little bit of candy. And it provides that sweetness, it provides that crunchiness. So it's a nice alternative for us to a less healthy snack. And the peaches, for example, would not have kept more than another day or two because they were quite ripe when we bought them. So this allows us to preserve them and eat them over the next two or three weeks. So that's why we freeze dry some of the stuff for immediate usage. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments and we'll answer anything that we can. All right, so our defrost cycle is done and we're up to 16.2 kilowatt hours total for a full load of uh, freeze drying and a defrost cycle. Um, and you can see it's all basically defrosted. And that bucket down there, that one gallon bucket, is about a third full out of that one load. So that tells you how much moisture it pulled out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.